Welcome to the first Sikha of Parshas Bolok in Chelek Yud Gimel on page 78. This is a Sikha on Rashi in the Nevoa of Bilam on the Pasuk Matoivoy Alecha Yake, which we say every day in the beginning of davening in the morning. Ala Pasuk Matoivu Oyalecha Yaakov Mishkan Eisecha Yisrael. How goodly are the tents of Yaakov and the dwellings of the Yidin. Pirish Rashi, so Rashi explains. What's the, what did he see that's good in the tents of Yidin? He saw the openings of their tents are not exactly one across another. In order that they shouldn't be able to peer into another person's tent, so they made the openings not exactly across another person's tent. What's the meaning of Mishkan Secha? Secha. It's your encampments. Kitagumai, as the Targum here says, that it refers to the encampments. Dover Acher, a second shot, Matoivu Oyalecho, Matoivu Oyal Shiloi Ubeise Lomim. How good is the oil of the Mishkan when it was in Shiloi, and also the Beisam Mikdash, Bi Yeshuvan, when it was standing. Shemakrivim ben Karbonis, Lachaper Alechem. That in the, both in Mishkan Shiloi and in the Beis HaMikdash, the Yidin bring Karbanes to atone for them. Mishkan Eisecha, according to this Pshat, what's the meaning of Mishkan Eisecha? Af keshehein charevin, even when the Mishkan Shiloi or the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, it's also good. Lefi shehein mashken aleichem, because the Ebesha takes them as a security for you, the Khurbana and their destruction, kapare ala nefoshes. It's an atonement for the souls. Shenemar, as we can see in the Pasuk, it says, Kilo Hashem as Hamasai. The Abish to end his anger, Uba Mekilo. How does the Abish to end his anger? Vayatzeis Eish Bitsiyain. And he burnt a fire in Tsiyain by burning the Beis Mikdash. That's the security and that's the kapara that it brought upon the Yidin through the Chorban of the Beis Mikdash. So these are the two Pshatim that Rashi here says in the Pasuk. So the Rebbe has many, many questions on these Rashis here. No less than nine questions, as we'll see. So the first question over here is, Bipirushoi, when Rashi says, Shemishkan Eisecha, Hainu Chani Eisecha, that Mishkan Eisecha means your encampments. Lama Lepirish Mishkan Eisecha Kipshutoi, why does Rashi not say that the meaning of the word Mishkan Eisecha is, like it is the simple Pshat, Loshen Rabim Shal Mishkan. Mishkan means dwelling. Mishkan Eisecha, your dwellings. How goodly are the dwellings of Yidin? Why encampments? O Befrat Shal Emetzinu Bekra, Loshen Yachid, the Chanoyos Mishkan. You never find in the Torah when it describes the Yidden where they where they camped that the Torah should use the singular term of Mishkan. Kiyim Chanoyseinu that we camped. We the encampment of Yidden is is Chanoyseinu, not Mishkan. The term Mishkan means a dwelling, and Rashi here is taking the word out of the Pashat Pshat. He's bringing the Targum that says that it means Chanoyseicha. What's forcing Rashi to do this? Beis Miloshana cause of another question. If you look at the words of the Pasik, Muchach, it's clear, Shema Toivu, when it says how good, Nimshach Gam Lemishkanisach Yisrael. It's saying how good are the tents of the Eden, and also Ma Toivu goes in the second part of the Pasik, Mishkanisach Yisrael. O Kiilu Nemar, as if it would have said in the Pasik, Ma Toivu Mishkanisach Yisrael. How goodly are the encampments of Eden? Well, Lachaira, now seemingly according to Rashi, What's so special and what's so good about the encampments of Yidin? Rashi doesn't tell us. When it comes to Oyalecho, Rashi explains that Bilam saw that the entrances of their tents are not facing one another. But when it comes to Mishkan Secha, Rashi doesn't tell us what that is. Gimel, another question. Yedua, Klal, Bepirish, Rashi, It's well known, the Klal, the rule, when it comes to Rashi, the way he interprets the Psukim. It was said already many times. If Rashi brings two or more interpretations on one Indian, each one of these pshatim has a question that there isn't in the other pshat. So the question over here is, What are the relative difficulties with each one of these pshatim and therefore Rashi brings another pshat? Another question here is, B'pirish HaSheni. When Rashi brings the second shot, Maitik Oida Pam as Atevis Matoivo Oyalecho. Rashi again brings the words of the Pasik, Ma Toivo Oyalecho. 
And Ashi does not say, as he usually does, in short, Usually when Ashi brings in the second shot, he says, and goes directly into his second shot. He doesn't bring the words from the Pasuk again. Why does Rashi do that here? Hey, the fifth question. Maine Rashi counts Shiloi Ubeiselam. That what are the goodly things? What's good that uh, Bilam sees? He sees Shiloi and Beiselam. Vein and Maske Oil Mayit. And Rashi does not mention the Oil Mayit right over here, the Eden War in the Midbar with the Mishkan, the Oil Mayit. Shahai Yitam Beisha Barcham, which Bilam sees now as he's benching the Eden. Why does Rashi skip that and go to the Mishkan Shiloi and to the Beisha Mikdosh? Vav, the, fifth, the sixth question. So what's the good that Bilam sees in Oil Shiloi and in the base of Mikdash? Mefarish Rashi, so Rashi says, Shemakrivim ben Karbonis. That it's the place that the Yidin bring Karbonis. L'chayre. Seemingly. Havalei lemeimar hatoi ikri. Why doesn't Rashi bring the, the main goodness that's here? Apipshuti shal mikra in, in In the Pashto Pshara the Pasuk, when we look back, to what the mitzvah is, kefishim mefurish bikra, v'asuli mikdash b'shvil v'shachanti b'seicham. That the mitzvah is to build a mikdash. What purpose? To have the shchina dwell there. That's the main goodness that there is in the uh, mishkan or in the base of mikdash. Hainu sheim mekaimis lashras shchina. There are places for the dwelling of the shchina. So why does Rashi specifically point out makrivin b'hem korbanis? Seventh question: Manegel avonis pirish akosav ayalecho shakarbonis heim lechaper aleichem. What's the reason that Rashi spells out when he explains ayalecho regarding the the the, the churban that the karbonis are mechaper they atone upon you v'shakarbonis shal mishkan isecho or kapora al anafoshes and ayalecho. Let me go back again a second. When it says ayalecho, that refers to the base of mikdash that it's standing. So, so Rashi says that it's the Karbonis, which are Kaparon. And the Beis HaMikdash, when it's destroyed, Mishkan Secha, Hu Kapara Al Anafoshis. It's a Kapara for your souls. Why is it Pachlal Negev for Rashi to bring this? The whole union of Karbonis. He sees the good, the goodness that Yidin have, which is the Beis HaMikdash. And that goodness is both when it's standing and even when it's destroyed. Why does Rashi have to bring this whole union of the Kapara, of the Karbonis? And Rashi stresses that there's a Kapara for the souls. If for understanding the meaning of the word Mishkan over here, Mishkan Eisecha, that it's a Mishkan, it's a Shemera, Shemerum is Bezeh Chorbanai, and it's a hint on the Chorban of the Beis HaMikdosh. It's a security, which is a, that's what the Chorban is. Nochotz Ladas, it's important to know, Shah Chorban, Kapara Al Anafasha, is that the Chorban is a Kapara for the souls of the Yidin, Madu Al Anisker In Yinzeh Be Pirish Rashi Beresh Parshas Pekudeh. Why doesn't Ashi bring this up earlier, in the beginning of Parshas Pekudeh? Shigam Shom Pirish Rashi, Ha Mishkan Mishkan, Shnei Pa'omim. The Torah writes the word Mishkan twice. Remez le Mishkan, Shinis Mashkin B'Shnei Churbanan Al Avin Esein Shal Yisrael. It hints to the two Bate Mikdash that have been taken as a security both times. They wish to destroy the Beis Mikdash because of the sins of Yidin. There, Rashi does not bring up this union of Karpara Al Anafoshes. Why not? Ches, the eighth question here is, Mawa in the kapara al hanafoshis. The nefoshis, the souls, need a kapara. What kind of a kapara are we talking about when we say nefoshis? Loshen she'ene ragel klal. This is a loshen that's totally unusual, that the nefesh of the person needs the kapara. Tes, the ninth question here is, Kivin shal korchach tzorech loimar. She'yeshdiyuk b'zeh. Definitely, when Rashi chooses this term, kapara ala nefoshis, it's definitely precise. Maya raya ma'aposik, kilo Hashem es chamosay. The day to end his anger, shechurbanon kapara ala nefoshis. That's the posik that Rashi brings to prove what the churban accomplishes, that the churban is a kapara for the nefoshis. Where do you see in the posik kilo chamosay, that it's a raya for this Indian of kapara ala nefoshis? So we have many, many questions over here. And the, the Rebbe wants to know what are the two Pshatim in general in Rashi? Why does Rashi bring two Pshatim? And uh, what's the uh, union of Chani Yisecha? What is this all about? Rashi doesn't even spell out what's good about the encampments of Yidin. 
And then in the second shot, the main thing that the Rebbe focuses on a lot over here is this Indian of Kapara Alanafoshis. The Chlal the Indian of Karbanis that Rashi brings up. And specifically, this Indian of Kapara Alanafoshis. What is this terminology of Kapara Alanafoshis all about? The Habib calls that, so the explanation in all of this is as follows. So let's go back and looking at the theme of what Bilam is talking about when he says this Nevoah. These are psukim here that Bilam is saying is Nevoah, but we have to look a little bit earlier in a few psukim before to see what he's talking about. As an introduction to this Nevoah of Matayvu, or as we'll see soon whether this is actually a Nevoah or not. Let's see. But as an introduction to this Matayvu, so what does it say? Bilam is saying of Bilam raises up his eyes. Vayar es Yisrael shaychin l'shvatov, and he sees the Yidden dwelling each to its shevet, each to its tribe. So Pidish Rashi, Rashi explains the meaning of shaychin l'shvatov. Ra kol shevet v'shevet shaychin la'atzmai. He saw each shevet dwelling to their to themselves. Each shevet had their place, as we know, the Yidden in the midbar were divided. With the Degolim, each one had their place, and each Shevet was separate from, the, from another. And they're not intermingled one with another. Everyone has their own place. And Ra, he also saw, that their doors, their openings of their tents, are not exactly across each other. That a person shouldn't, when he opens his door, and another, he has a tent right across, where the door is also could be open, and be able to look directly into his neighbor's tent. They created it in a way that there should be privacy and modesty and sneers, that everybody's tent, the door should be, the opening should be, not get across another tent. So the Rebbe explains now this Rashi of Sheikh and Shvatav, and based on this Rashi, we'll understand Matoivu, which follows this Indian. What brings Rashi to explain Shaykh and Lushvata this way? Pashtus Lashon Akosov. If you look at the simple reading of this Pasik here, Vayar es Yisrael, Shaykh and Lushvata, and he saw the Yidden dwelling according to their Shvatim, Mashma Shara Chidish. Bilam recognized, he saw something unique, something new. Hanhagim Yuchedes Vetevi Biyaser, a very unique and good conduct of Yidden. Shaharei, Riyazu Garma, Levati Olav Ruach Alekim. It's this that he saw that caused that the spirit of the Eivishter was upon him to bench the Yidin. As Rashi says, Upirish Rashi, Allah Beliboy, when he saw this goodness of Yidin, so it entered into his heart, Shalele Kalalem, not to curse the Yidin. Van Hagezu Haisenidis Beshaychen Oifen Chanoyes Yisrael Shvatov. So therefore Rashi explains what was special, what was so good, what was so unique of what he saw in the way the Yidin were, were living there in the Midbar. He saw how the Yidin were camping in the Midbar. So, He saw how the Yidin lived. Each Shevet was living separately. It was organized and each Shevet had their own place. It wasn't just one big intermingling between one and another. And this shows that the Yidin were very, very careful with their lineage. They were very careful in their lifestyle, the way they lived, and who married who, and the children that were born, that it should be kosher children. And they were very, very careful with, with, with their whole lifestyle in the Yuchsen. This already is brought before in Parshas by Midbar, when they had to prove their, prove their lineage of each Shevet, as Rashi says, how do they prove when they were counting the Yidin? How do they prove which child, which person belonged to which Shevet? They brought the books that they had, where they had written the lineage of every person, and witnesses that testified on exactly who was born to whom. It was very, very clear, and everybody lived in this way, where the Shvatim was separate, they camped that way, they lived that way, they had everything recorded, and the birth of all the people. That Shazet, the Rebbe says, Meire al Malasam on the flaw b'midas atzniyas. This shows on the, the amazing Maila of Yidin, to what extent they were careful with tzniyas, for everybody to live appropriately and properly in a kosher way and have children in a kosher way. This was the special middah of tzniyas that he saw amongst Yidin, that each shevet camps separately and vein and muravim. They're not just all intermingled with one another. Since Bilam saw this level of Yidin, nispal b'yayser. He was very uh, moved by this. 
He decided not to curse the Yidin. That's one detail that Ashi tells us. But Ashi says something else. It should have been written in the Pasuk. That the Yidin would dwell in each one in their Shvatim. Why does it say the Shvatov? The mashma sheina shvatim muvuravim yachad shoichel l'shvatim means that they dwell each shevet separately. That's the first point that Rashi says here. Yach hashadiyek akasov leima sheichel l'shvatov. What does the pasuk say? It says sheichel l'shvatov in their tribes, in their shvatim. Hareza yachache. That exact word that the pasuk uses, l'shvatov, proves shara oydin yanaila. That yes, that uh, sorry, uh, Bilam saw something else here. Hamesbate l'shvat b'l'shvat tov, which means b'chol shevet v'shevet bifnei atzmai. Not only the general style of encampments of all the yidden, the way all the shvatim dwelled separately, but within each shevet separately, nikesh zeh shevet Yisrael. You looked at the way they uh, put up their tents within each one of the shvatim, and there was something unique that you saw that yidden had. And therefore Rashi adds another point, that they set up their tents with the doorways, not one across another, so they shouldn't peer into their friend's tent. We'll move on, that Bilam seeing this level of Yidin, this mile of Yidin, this caused Bilam not to want to curse the Yidin. So there were two things that Bilam over here saw that was unique. In this Lashon of Sheikh and Shvatov, he saw the general style of encampments of Klal Yisrael, that all the Shvatim are separate. And he also saw the specific way they are living within their tents and the openings of their tents that they're not one across another, so they shouldn't look into each other's tents. So now we come back to the Rashi's Pshat of Matoivu Oyalecha Yaakov and Mishkan Yisrech Yisrael. Now fitting to this introduction of what Bilam saw, Mevaya Rashi Hemshach Aksuvim Rashi explains the continuation of the Psukim. Shekeshaba Bilam Achrekel Nedabe Toiba Yisrael. When Bilam came to speak good on Yidin, who Mefarish. So Rashi says La Achre Apsiche. After the opening words that it says Nuum Bilam Benoi Baer the Gaimer Gluye Noim, describing and opening who Bilam is. So hatam loma ena mekalalam. So here the pasuk gives you the reason why he's not going to be cursing them. So this is not actually yet the prophecy that Bilam says. This is giving the reason based on what he saw, based on the two things he saw. He now is going to give the reason of why he's not going to curse the Yidden. Mitzad beis milas beis amilas anal. And here he says because of the two things, the two good things he saw amongst the Yidden. Matayvu oyal lecho yakif. He saw the tents of the Eden. He saw how their tents are positioned, the openings, the doorways of their tents. And then he also saw the Mishkan Yisachar. What does Mishkan Yisachar refer to? The general style of the encampment of Yidin in the Midbar, the way each one of the Shvatim was camping separately. There was no intermingling between one and another. The two points that we spoke about before, and therefore the Pasuk over here says, Ma toivu, how good is? When you read this in the simple interpretation of this, this is not yet the bracha of Bilam or the nevuah of Bilam. This is Bilam expressing his spilos, his excitement, or how moved he is of the good things that he sees. Which is the reason why he won't curse them. He speaks in their praise and he benches them. And this is the Pshar of Rashi here. That's one good detail that he saw amongst Eden. The, their tents, the position of the doorways of their tents. Rashi says, it refers to their encampments. So Rashi switches from the simple pshat, Mishkan Yisecha would usually mean your dwellings. Why does Rashi here say that it means Chani Yisecha? Because this is Hamayla Hashni Hanal. This is in connection to what we said before, the second Mayla, the second good thing that he saw amongst Yidin, the way all the Shvatim and generally were encamped in the Midbar. 
the way they were camping in the midbar, each shaved separately. And this is also fitting with what it says before in the Ready and Parshas by Midbar. Each one of the uh, from Yidin, they all camped in their camp with their shaved. The Kivin Shein's at Pirish now, because this pshat of Mishkan secha is not the usual pshat of this word. Usually Mishkan secha does mean dwellings. It doesn't mean encampments. So therefore, Meisif Rashi, Raya Lepirushai Ketagumai. As a proof to his pshat, Rashi adds that he took it from the Targum. Sha Targum Mefarash Kain, Beis Meishrach. The place of your encampment. Shazer Teguma Shulchanoya. The word Meishrach means your encampment. Bechol Mokim, everywhere. So therefore Rashi took from the Targum this pshat that it refers to Chani Yosecha. Which is the uh, second Indian that Bilam, the good thing that Bilam saw amongst Yid. This is all the first pshat of Rashi. So Rashi here is, is explaining that Bilam is expressing the two good details that he saw amongst Eden, and because of these two things, he says, how good they are, and therefore this is the reason why he's going to later bench them. Um, um, now that Rebbe will explain, what are the questions in this chat? According to this chat, the first chat if you hear in Rashi, Kosha, we have the following questions. Aleph number one, as we already pointed out, We never find that the word Mishkan means encampment. The word Mishkan usually means dwelling. So this is an unusual interpretation of this word. Beis, another problem here is the order of the Pasik. Chanoya Sashvatim is Klal v'gam Kainu Bizman. The way the Shvatim in general are camping in the Midbar, that's more inclusive. That refers to the general picture of how the lifestyle of all the Shvatim. And it's also something that comes earlier in time. And only afterwards should come the detail, which is once they actually put up their tents and the way they position their tents. That's only a detail. The Chol Shevet, within each Shevet. Cain, if so, the Pasuk seems to be out of order. The first should have spoken about the good that he saw in Yidin in the general encampments of all the Shvatim before he talks about the, the, the specific position of the tents. Which this is also the reason for the order in Rashi before. Before when Rashi spoke about what Bilam saw, so Rashi first says that he, show, he saw them all camping separately and they're not intermingled. Only afterwards Rashi says, because that's a detail within each Shevet. So why over here does the Pasuk say it in an opposite order? Gimel, another thing over here is, the fact that each shevet is dwelling separately, camps separately, and they don't intermingle, who are in your ikri? This seems to be the, the, the main point over here. This is relevant for the status of all the people that were born to know who their father and mother was and to have it clear they're, they're, that they're born bekashras, they're born pure. The Godla Malose Baharbe, this is much more relevant, this is much more powerful. Comparing it to the other detail that the openings, their doorways, are not exactly one across the other. Which is only coming to prevent this Indian, that a person shouldn't be able to look into his friend's tent. What's, what's more important? What's more relevant? The fact that you have the cheskas leidosom, that Yidin lived in a, li a lifestyle where every person was born the kashros and there was the modesty in their lifestyle, that's a much more general, general Indian than talking about this detail that they, the doorways are not one across each other and they can't look into each other's tents. Cain, gami tamze, for this reason as well, hoyet sarechliye sidram vekasavze, hafuch. The order in the Pasuk should have been the opposite. How good is the encampments of Eden in general? And And then to talk about the detail of the doorways. Matoivu does go on both. But because them is staver, it's logical to say, 
the matoivu, with what it starts off with, when it says matoivu, whatever it says first, that's, the goodness of that is stronger. That's why it comes first, and that's right directly after the word of matoivu. So, what's the reason for the fact that we switch to say that of the Pasuk? Besides what the Rebbe said before, that it's a klal and a prat, now the Rebbe is looking at the actual theme of these two things, that in the Teichene Indian, it makes sense to talk about what's more important, the fact that the Eden don't intermingle and they marry properly and they have children properly, that's much more important than this detail of Eden not looking into one each other's tent. Shaila Dalid al Matoivu Goyim, according to the Pshat that we're saying here, that Matoivu is actually not a Navua. This is just Bilam explaining the reason why he sees good in Yidin, that he's not going to curse them. There's no Navua here. In the Pasuk where it says, that I've quoted before, part of the Pasuk, that this is Bilam speaking, so then it says also there, that that Bilam hears a prophecy from the Eibishter. And only after that, that it says that he hears the prophecy of the Eibishter, does it say Mat Toivu. But according to this Pshara Rashi, it's not a prophecy. It's not yet a prophecy. So this Pasuk should have been before when it says, Nu'um Shemeya Imre. Af However, the Rebbe says we could say, <coughs> Since there's this opening where Bilam starts speaking about who he is, that he's Bilam, so the Pasuk concludes to say that he also is having a prophecy. Although the next Pasuk is not yet the prophecy. But still the Rebbe says, Matoivu over here is coming after it says that he had a prophecy when this is not yet the actual prophecy that Bilam had. Because of these questions, maybe Rashi, Pirisheni, Rashi brings a second shot. And here, the second shot, Rashi is telling us that Bilam is telling us a prophecy about the future. That Matoivu refers to the future in Oil Shiloi and the Beis Mikdosh when, they, when they're standing. And Rashi doesn't have to explain, but it's obvious what Rashi will explain. But even before Rashi gives the explanation of what goodness there is there, it's simply understood that there's a tremendous goodness in the oil shiloi and the Beis HaMikdosh. Because it says here the terminology of oil, a tent, that's how Rashi knows we're talking about the oil of shiloi. It does use a plural term, so it's clear. It's including not only one place, it's not only including Oyel Shiloi, but it also includes another place, in the content of what this place is about. It's a Mikdosh, it's similar to Oyel Shiloi. And therefore, as she says, it refers to the Beis Elamim, to the Beis Mikdosh. So that's the pshat of Matoivu Oyalech, referring to the base of Mikdash. This is a Nevuah for the future going in the base of Mikdash. And then Mishkan Yisrach Yisrael. Gam bezeh mechuvan lo'el shilei ha'beis elam. This is also a Nevuah on oil shilei and the base of Mikdash. El shanidun du bezman churbanam. Here the Pasuk is talking about at the time when they are destroyed. Ulechein toyarom Mishkan Yisrach. So here the Torah describes it in the Nevuah here. As a mashkin, Mishkan Yisrach ha'meloshem mashkin. Now this is the time period when the Abishah takes away the base of Mikdash as a security for Klal Yisrael. That's the second shot of Rashi. So the main thing that's, that's bringing Rashi to say this is that now the order of the Psukim is, is, is much better. First you talk about the base of Mikdash and the oil Shile when it's standing. And then after that you talk about when it's destroyed. So the order of the Pasuk is right. And also it's a Nevoah. It's Taka Nevoah, which comes after it said, Neum, Neum Shemeya Imre Kel, that he's saying a Nevoah here. Now the Rebbe will come and explain why Rashi brings in the Indian of Karbanas. And also why Rashi specifically talks about that the Khurban is a kapara for the Nefoshes. What's the meaning, what's the significance of this expression? As mentioned before, it's self-understood what goodness there is in the oil Shiloi and the Beis HaMikdosh. Heim b'kiyumam, both when they're standing, v'heim b'chorbonan, and even after they're destroyed. Shaharei oz, harehein mashken aleichem, it's a security that the Ebesha holds for Yidin, that Yidin should do tshuva, so there's, there's a goodness in that as well, it's self-understood. Kol makayim, harein izboyer le'el, as we mentioned before, so the same is relevant for the second shot as well. Shekosov ze'a maschah b'loshen ma toivu v'gayim, 
When this pastor uses the term ma toivu, how good, hu ke'en sinistam lomein mekalalam. This is the giving a reason why he's not cursing the Eden. In other words, even according to this second pshat, that this is already the beginning of the prophecy of Bilam, but nevertheless, even according to this pshat, when the Pasuk uses the term matoivu, it's also giving a reason why he's not cursing Eden. Ubemele mochrech loimar, shuhu adavar gam lefi pirish zeasheni, that this is also true over here according to this second pshat. Shat toiv, shenizkavim Bilam ba miras inyin ze, hu gam tam lome mekalalam. The goodness in the prophecy of Bilam here is also a reason why he doesn't curse them. So therefore Rashi adds over here, that when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, you bring Karbonis that atones for Yidin. And Rashi also adds, even when the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, it's a kapara for the nefoshes of Yidin. How is this an explanation why Bilam doesn't curse Yidin? Fahabir. So the Pshat is as follows. And now again, the Rebbe tells us, we have to look back to see what happens over here in the story. If you want to know what Rashi is saying, you have to see the context of the Psukim. Why did Bilam want to curse the Yid? What happened there? Ha'achonah de Bilam, in the preparation of Bilam for his Nevuah, in the beginning of, the, of all this whole Indian here, Hoysa, v'leholach kepam bepam lekras nechoshim. He did not, he was, wasn't going like he did usually when he was saying his nevuah. What, what, he was trying to do something different. Pirish Rashi. So Rashi explains, what did, he, what did he try to do different? He said, Askir Avonisayim. Let me mention, let me remind the Abishter of the Yidin sins. Va'aklole al askaras Avonisayim tochel. And then my curses upon Yidin will take effect for the Avedis that Yidin do. That's what Bilam was trying to do. Ulechein, so therefore, achakach, when Bilam comes and finally benches them, so it's necessary to explain why Take it is that remembering and mentioning the Avedis of Yidin, the Klola, the curse, will not take effect. When the Pasuk says, The Ma'il of the Beis HaMikdash, or the Ayel Shiloi, is Pirushai, Pirish, the Pshar is, Shemakrivim ben Karbanes lechaper aleichem. That the Beis HaMikdash is mechaper, it atones for all, I mean the same, escaper and the sins of the Eden are atoned for, and therefore the Klala cannot take effect on the, on the Avainus, on the Avainus of the Eden. That's why Rashi brings in this whole Indian of the Karbanus and the Kapare to explain why Taka the Nevu of Bilam, where he was trying to mention the Avainus of Eden, couldn't take effect. Ah, Valadai names them Maspe, but Rashi is not satisfied with this. Aleph number one, Hareze Rak Bismansha Bismikdosh Kayam. This only includes those sins when the, when the Beis HaMikdash is standing. But there's still room for the Klala of Bilam to take effect, looking at the future in the Avedis of Yidin after the Chorban. And then there's no Karbanis to be Mechaper. Bey is not only that, Gam Oz, even when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, Hareya Karbanis Mechaperim, Rakala Shaykik Bishakaris. The, the Karbanis are only an atonement for those Avedis that is a shaygig for Issacharis. Ayel amazed, b'Isarasei. There's amazed in certain cases for an Issarasei where there's also a carbon. Ayel laven shayin in certain laven, as it says in Chumim Parshas Vayikra, that there's a carbon for. Aval al amazed b'Issacharis for amazed and by Issacharis or Mrs. Bezdin v'Chulo where there's a Mrs. Bezdin ain't a carbonis mechaprim. The carbonis do not atone for the averes of Yidden. Dim kain are they efshesh tochel aklala alav in the same mail. So the Klala of Bilam that he was trying to re remind of the Avedis of Yidin could take effect even while the Beis HaMikdash is standing for these Avedis that there are no Kabbanas for. L'chein, Moisif Rashi. So therefore Rashi adds, V'churbanon kapara ala nefoshes. The destruction of the Beis HaMikdash is a kapara for their souls. What's this mean? What's the meaning of souls? Masim lepirushai. And this goes along with what Rashi explains before in Parshas Kairach. These individuals that sinned with their souls, and Rashi there says, They are sinners with their souls. When is that? That they came to rebel and fight against the Ebeshter himself, which is Tachlis Apshia. This is the ultimate sin to come and rebel against the Ebeshter himself. So what Rashi over here is saying is that the Churban Beis Mikdash. 
is an atonement even for the greatest Aveda of all, even for a, a, a Shia and a, 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 when they are fighting against the Abishta himself. So therefore we understand that the Chorban Beis Amikdash is a kapara for everything, for all Avedas. If even the worst Aveda, so it's a kapara for everything. That's why the Nevoah, why that's what Bilam is saying over here, that his, um, his curse can't take effect, because even for the worst Aveda, he didn't have a, a, a kapara through the Chorban. Kein Yeshleima. Another thing that Rebbe says we can say is she kavanosoi that the kavan of Rashi over here a kapanim le leramis. Rashi is at least is hinting to this kapara ala nefoshes. There's a kapara for the souls, plural term souls. What is this referring to? It's referring to two times in the Torah when it uses the term nefesh regarding an aveda. Mi nefesh ki sechta b'shgaga, the soul that sins. The soul that sins b'meizid. So nefashoyis refers to the fact that the Chorban is mechaper on both of these nefashoyis, whether b'shoigik or b'meizid. That's the pshat in the Rashi over here. And that's the reason why the Klod of Bilam can't take effect. So Rashi proves the fact that this Chorben is a kapare for the Yidin, a total kapare for all sins. Shenema kilo Hashem es chamosai. The Pasuk says this ends Hashem's anger. The emphasis on the word kilo. Kolayma meaning, shal yideva yatzeis eish b'tzien. By bringing the fire in the Beis HaMikdosh, Chorben Beis HaMikdosh, the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh, kol so chamosa shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this totally ended the anger of the Eivishter, she beglal of inesayim shal Yisrael, which is a result of the Avedis of Yidin. So harei, this proves, she neskapru, al yidei achorben, kol ha-avainis gam achi chamurais, v'shem ba'ova gamken, all the Avedis of Yidin, even of the past, everything was totally, totally atoned for through the Chorben Beis HaMikdosh. Otherwise, there's still left over of the Abish's anger. And the Pasuk says, Kilo, that the destruction ends the Abish's anger. So that's the riot to the whole thing that Rashi is trying to say here that Bilam sees that there are no Avedis. There are no Avedis by Yidin that his curses could take effect on because the Yidin have Karbanis, and even when they don't have Karbanis, they have the destruction of the Besam Mikdosh, which is a kapara for all the Avedis of Yidin. We'll move on Alpizer, and based on this we understand Why Rashi brings again from the Pasik the words when he says the second Pshat. To emphasize that these words of Bilam here This is also an introduction to explain that the, that the uh, Klala, the, the curses can't take effect. Even though, according to the second pshat, it is a prophecy for itself, but it's also an introduction and a reason why the uh, Kalala can't take effect. That's what Rashi wants to tell you, that even according to this pshat, he is explaining the And this is what forces us to say that what is the goodness of the Beis HaMikdosh, who it's the Karbanis that atones for the Avedis, and also the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh is the Kapara. Now, based on this, we can understand. The question of the Rebbe, one of the questions before was, why doesn't Ashi bring this in Parshish Pekudeh as well, where it's mentioned the first time, Hamishkan Hamishkan. So over there, there's no point in bringing this Indian of the Karbanis. There it's just coming to speak about, it's a hint for the two Batim Mikdashis. It's not this whole theme that we're talking about over here. The Kapar of Eden is irrelevant there. The Eine Gesh on the Farish by Mei Malos and Vachulu. The Mile of the Beis Hamikdash. What it's all about is not. It's not Negei. It's just coming to be Meramas. That there's going to be more than one Mishkan. There's going to be another two Mikdashes. Hashem King Khan Kanal, which is not the case over here, as we already explained. Over here, we're coming to explain why the Nevua of Bilam and why the Klala of Bilam could not take effect in Klal Yisrael. Now the Rebbe will explain what's the problem with the second shot. Why does not Rashi? Why doesn't Rashi bring only the second shot? However, we have the following problems with the second shot. Aleph number one: It's a doichik to say that the Beis Hamikdash, which is a house, it's a permanent place, should be referred to in the pasuk with the expression of oil, oil which is a temporary place. Beis, another problem is, 
Nizbayer, there's another sikhir, this is in Chelek Yer Aleph, where the Rebbe explains. Bebira Pirish Arashi Anal, Bereish Parshis Pekude, regarding the Rashi in Pekude. Shatam Lome Ein Rashi Mefare Shom, Sham Mishkon, Mishkon Koyal, Mishkon Shilev, Albesam Mikdash. Why there does Rashi not say that the two times that it says Mishkon refers to Mishkon Shiloi and to the Besam Mikdash, like he does here? Kiyim al beis ha mikdashais. Why over there does Rashi say that it refers to the two bottom mikdashais? Lefisha al mishkan shiloi lo yitachin aloshin mashkin. Because regarding the mishkan shiloi, it doesn't. It's not really uh, befitting to use the term mashkin that it's a security that the Eibusher takes it as a security. Why not? What's the what's the concept of a mashkin? Mashkin who davar ha nitl me aloive ba'ifin aray. A mashkin is a collateral, a security that you take from the borrower on a temporary basis, ara yuzmani, achi yifra chayiv, until he pays back the loan, shoaz chayiv zara mashkin lo and then you give him back the, the mashkin. V'zeh shayach loim, so using that as an, uh, over here, regarding the Beis HaMikdosh, v'zeh shayach loim, merak benegeh le Beis HaMikdosh, to say that Eivish gives back what he's taking, that you could only say regarding the Beis HaMikdosh. Shebe Beis HaMikdosh HaSheini, Hochza Beis HaMikdosh HaAlef. In the second Beis HaMikdosh, he even got back the same Beis HaMikdosh as well. Now the Rebbe adds, Ki Av She'einim Doimim Zelo Zeba Chol Proteim, although the second Beis HaMikdosh was not exactly the same as the first Beis HaMikdosh, but Mekomokim Shovimim Benekudos HaMeikris. They are similar in the main point of what they are. Shashneim Bayis LaKadosh Baruch. They're both a permanent home for the Eibishter. Masha'en Ke Mishkan Shiloi, which is not the case when it comes to Mishkan Shiloi, Hurak Dira Sara. That's a temporary dwelling. Vimkein Eichav Shaloyma, Shem Mishkan Isecha, Koi Gamal Mishkan Shiloi Bechorboni Liyosei Mashkin. That the term Mishkan Isecha refers to Mishkan Shiloi, which was a temporary dwelling, and it's only a Mashkin, and the Abishu will give back Mishkan Shiloi. The Abishu never gives back Mi- Mishkan Shiloi. After Mishkan Shiloi was destroyed, the Beis Amitish was built. This Mishkan was never given back. So therefore, in Parshish Pekude, Rashi doesn't say this. Ulepirish ze shemishkan isecha hainu oyalecha. And according to what Rashi says over here, that mishkan isecha does refer to the tents. Ela kifisha heim bechurbanon. It refers to the tents when they are destroyed. That's why over here, as we said before, Rashi says that it refers to an oil. It refers to the Mishkan Shile, which is an oil, because Mishkan Eisecha is talking about the oil when it's destroyed. Hayes over here, the Pasik uses the term Oyhal Lecha. We're going to have to say that it at least includes also the Mishkan Shile, which is a tent. So therefore, this, this creates a problem. On one hand, we have to say we're talking about a tent, which is Mishkan Shiloi. On the other hand, regarding Mishkan Shiloi, you can't really say that it's a Mashkin, because it's not a collateral that Abisha takes and returns. Mashen kem beparshis pikude. In parshis pikude, the Torah doesn't use the term oyalecha. Shemipnei kushi anal because of this question. The farshim shakosav leikoy al shilai. The pasuk there we say taka is not talking about shilai. It's talking about the two bottom mikdashes which the Abisha takes and returns. So those are the problems that we have with the second pshat of Rashi. Therefore, Rashi also brings the first pshat. The first pshat is closer to the simple pshat of the Pasik. The first pshat is the main pshat of the Pasik. Because the first pshat is smoother in the flow of the Pasik, as Rashi explained, as Rebbe explained before. And what's the main problem we have? Hakushi who besayed the The problem we have with the first pshat is only in the order that things are switched around. Bilam begins talking with um, about about the encampments of the or, or the positions of the tents, and only after that he talks about the general encampments of Yidden. So it's out of order. Regarding something which is out of order in the pasuk, so that you find a few times in Teira that you switch around the order of the pasuk. Which is not the case in the second pshat. Over here, there's a problem in the teichen of the pasuk that it's, it's talking about an oil, and that we we say it goes on the base of mikdash, which is a bias, and it's talking about a mashkin, and it's not really a mashkin bchalal. The Eibusher does not return the same mishkan shiloi. So this gives a much bigger questions, and therefore Rashi brings the second pirish second, and the first pirish is first. Ha'hayra mi Pirish Rashi Anal, the lesson that we can take from this Rashi. 
From the content of what Rashi is telling us here, we can see how important and how relevant and how powerful the Indian of Tznius is, modesty is. Sha'af, Zet, even this detail. Sha'im Pischeim Uchovanim Zet Keneget Zet. That their doorways of their tents are not precisely one across another. Shulachayra Eina Eyn Ikrib Tznius. This is not a very central and important thing in Tznius. Sha'ray Tich Tachnisa Yurak Shulayatzitz Latoyach Oyel Chaveyre. It's only the purpose of this is that one person shouldn't be able to peer into the tent of his friend. But he ne gam dovazeh, even something small like this. When he, even a person like Bill Marasha sees this, so this affects him and causes that Allah believe Shalayla Kalalam, that it, he decided not to curse the Yidin Vacha Barcham and he benched them like a continuation of a continuation of the Pasik, Kanachalam Nitoyu Gaimer. So the lesson of this is Al Yaimarada, a person should not make the mistake and say to himself. When it comes to those basics and those very important things in, 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 in areas that sneers, like the first thing that it says here in the Postage, that the Shvatim are camping all separately and they're not, inter, they're not intermingled. We're talking here about the fact that families are separate and the relationships are appropriate and the children are born that are kosher. The main things about sneers, Ian is. That's the basics and the main things, that's something that he can be careful with. When it comes in the area of tznias, of something that seems to be very trivial, very petty. Over here, this is an area that is not so necessary to be so careful with this. So this is a mistake. A person should know. Even the smallest detail in sneers is very important. Like we see over here, the effect of even this small detail that Bilam noticed that the effect it had on him that he did not curse the Eden. And it, 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 exchanged, it changed his heart from one extreme to another. But there's still room for the Yetzirah to come and persuade a person and to tell him as follows. When is it true that even a petty, even a small detail of Tznius is important? When a person is in his primary place, in his general and more permanent conduct. When a person is in a temporary place, it's not his regular place, when he's out on a trip somewhere, when he's out of the city, when he's out of his normal place, and over there he's more relaxed and more open. So over there he thinks that it's not so important to be careful with even the smallest details of Tznius. So for this, you also have the lesson. That he sees this small detail that the openings of their tents are not right across each other, which means even when they're in temporary dwellings, even when a person is found in a temporary place, this being careful and this level of tznius, that even the smallest thing matters, is relevant here as well. On the other hand, when a person is careful with this, then the result is the Ebishter transforms everything into a blessing. As Rashi says, he wanted a cursed Eden, but he benched the Eden, the Adla, Yiu, the Mishkan, Atoiv, Bishlemos, so the Ebishter returns the Mishkan completely, the Ebishter returns the Mashkin, the Beis Elamim, the Beis Mishkan, the Beis Mikdash, the Mashkin Meira. The idea of a security is, the the lender holds the security there and it exists in its possession all the time. So the Beis Hamikdash is there, prepared and ready. And when the Eden's atonement will be completed, it will come down and descend in the world forever and ever. Before I conclude there, let me just um, refer you to Ha'ara 34, which as you notice, is a Ha'ara which is emphasized, and the words are even larger than the Pnim of the Siche. So the Rebbe here spoke about the conduct of Tznius, and being careful in Tznius, even in a temporary dwelling. So the Rebbe says, V'kan amokim lahadgish. 
Here is the place to emphasize something that's relevant for this time of the year, in summer when people go out, out of their regular dwellings, those people that are lenient, in areas of Tznias in the summer, and specifically, they're found in their vacation homes outside of the city, and there, from those, they say to themselves, I could sin and uh, do tshuva. The expression that Chazal used, Echta v'ashuv, and the Rebbe here on the play of words, the Rebbe says, Echta v'ashuv, kasha ashuv ve'ira. When I'm out outside of the city, so over there I'm more relaxed, over there I don't have to be so careful when I'm in the, when I'm in the temporary dwelling. When I come back to the city, ashuv, so there I'll go back to my regular conduct of sneers. And the Rebbe adds, V'negeila and hoges and noshim gamkein, sneers is relevant for men as well. This is something that Rebbe used to speak about many times, that sneers is not only for women, but it's for men as well, ubefrat lenoshim, but it's more specifically relevant for women, shaharei kol echad ve'echad mehen nikras akeres abayis. She is the anchor of the home, and therefore her conduct it will affect to a very large degree the children that she raises. V'yesh laharech ve'en kam mekoimai.